Hi, it's Stephen Caleb from Brownells with another episode of Smithbusters. And today, Caleb, you got some AR-15 related stuff on tap, I see. You know, you know me, Steve. There's, and there's always an AR-15 related myth out there, I feel like. Yes, um, there are. This one, this one may be a little bit long overdue to talk about. We're going to talk about bedding the barrel into your upper receiver. Oh, you mean kind of gluing it in place? Yeah. Yep, so there's these guys out there, they'll take green Loctite and bed their barrel extension into their upper receiver. If you're already lost on the terminology, uh, let, me, let me just run through it real quick here. So this is an AR-15 barrel. This piece on the back here is your barrel extension. That's what goes inside of your upper receiver. Usually a slip fit. Yeah, like so. This one will just uh, slip in there. It's a little dry, but... And it presses right into place. Now, what guys are doing and gals, I'm sure it's maybe, I, I don't know, uh, whatever. But what they're doing is they're taking green Loctite and they're putting it on their barrel extension. Uh, that place you s usually see me put grease on. So they're literally doing the opposite of what I'm doing. You can't get any more opposite than Loctite and grease, but whatever. So this is personal. That, it, have you, you caught on to that, Steve? Yeah. This is, I'm looking at you. All right. So what they do is they put green Loctite on there, they press it into place, then they uh, wipe off the excess, torque their barrel down, and then uh, they say their AR-15 is now way more accurate because they did that. I, the, so far, I want to know so far your thoughts on this, Steve, because we, we, didn't, we didn't talk about this before we started filming it. We, so you're getting the, the initial... I mean, uh, that's how we do videos here. I yeah, guess. that's how we do it. So, uh, yeah, I want to know your thoughts on this so far, Steve. How do you feel? Well, it's it's possible it may add some rigidity on a really loose joint or something, but the standard joint with the barrel nut tightened down sufficiently seems to work just fine at 500, 1,000 meters. I'm so glad you said that, Steve. So, yeah, if you have a really loose fit, Sure, it's gonna it's gonna help because you're taking up a lot of space in there. And what can happen if you don't have a tight fit is the barrel, and this one is kind of a tight fit, and you can still feel it just a little bit. The barrel can actually wiggle around inside that extension, uh, inside that upper receiver area before it's torqued down. You can actually feel that, and you know, to some people's brains, they may be like, "Oh man, that's a that's a big issue. I need to do something uh -huh. to fill that gap." Uh, but Whenever you put a barrel nut on here and torque this flat on the barrel extension right. to the flat on your upper receiver, you, you, you can't get any more movement because you have two flats torqued against each other. You can't other. get that yeah, there's movement a, this way. There's, yeah, there's no way for it to move that it way. It could only shift it can, in, in the same plane, but it's not going to shift because of the friction. Right, so shifting in the same plane would be not tilting, but rather just kind of yeah. gliding along that area. But... Here's another thing that happens whenever you torque down your upper receiver. So I know you guys may have seen the studies out there where over torquing muzzle devices causes constriction at the muzzle uh, because the threads actually constrict the inside diameter of the bore if you over torque it. Um, kind of the same thing happens back here and this is aluminum. So when you torque it down, you actually very minutely but enough reduce the inside diameter of your upper receiver just a little bit and it grabs on to that extension anyway so it can't move like that that so that that's kind almost of like a collet it almost like a collet a so, like a solid collet yeah uh is, is kind of how it acts just because if it's a good fit to start with i mean it's not going to yeah shrink it, much. listen here if you if you've got a super loose fit and you're like man i'm just gonna throw some locked just you you are if that if that fit sucks, chances are your upper receiver sucks in other places. So just get a new upper receiver. Now, what about the other way of doing this, where there's an interference fit? Uh, explain. Well, some builders or some manufacturers make their upper receivers mm. slightly smaller. So, I have absolutely no beef with that. I think that's a right really good way to do it. You machine that inside diameter of the upper receiver slightly smaller. So then you have to heat up your upper receiver to get that barrel extension in there. And now you have the tightest fit possible and it's all concentric. You don't have any weird Right, that aluminum grows 
a great deal because it's just a thin shell. Yeah. So it will respond to heat nicely. You can slip the barrel in and when it cools, nice and tight. That's the way to do it. Um, JP does it. I think you said Wilson does. Wilson we, Combat Wilson has Combat. done that in, in the um, past. And I, I want to say Bravo Company has done that also. I yeah. may be mistaken. I don't think they offer all their uppers that way. No, but, no. Uh, the, hey, if you get one that's built in-house, yeah. uh, that's, that's how they'll end up doing it. And that's a great way to do it. And everyone who's doing that, everyone who's you know, at, going for bedding that upper receiver uh, to that barrel, is also talking about lapping the upper receiver. Oh, dear. Which, I mean, it's not a terrible, if you're going right. to bed it, you might as well lap it because whenever you have everything torqued down, you want it to be as even as possible because you just put a butt ton of locks. A butt ton is a <laughs> measurement, Steve. It's a metric measurement. Metric. It? It's, it's very metric. Uh, so a butt ton of Loctite on there. Of course, you're going to want it to be straight. But no, um, in most modern upper receivers, I would say that it's not even really that necessary to to lap them. And listen, we sell a lapping tool, okay? Marketing is screaming in my face right now at this video. But anyways, most of your modern upper receivers are, or I say most, quality upper receivers don't yeah. even really require that. And when you when you try that lapping tool, odds are it's just going to take an even layer yeah. off there. It, I mean, you, you didn't need to do it to start with. Yeah, and the argument I hear about that is, well, it's forged. Forging isn't you know, perfect. It's like, yeah, it's forged, but they machine it after they forge it. That's yeah. a surface that gets machined flat, so it, it should be flat. Uh, now, if you take your lapping tool to it and you notice that it's taking off way more on one side and not at all on the other, yeah, it's, it's not right. It's not uh, correct. And sure, go ahead and lap it and get it nice and concentric. You're definitely not going to hurt anything by doing that. So, yeah. All right. Lapping's cool. Bedding is not cool. You just if, if it's at the point where you need to bed it, you just need new parts. Get something's, something's bad wrong. So the bedding myth is busted? Busted. It, maybe it was required back in the day, but, you know, I'm, uh, I'm only 18 years old, so I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm in my 30s. Uh, there's another myth for another time, I guess. All right. Caleb's 18. Whatever. All right. Anywho. So, well, yeah, if you busted. care to differ with this issue, please let us know what kind of results you've had with bedding your uh, receiver to your barrel. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Leave a comment, hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time with another edition of Smithbusters.